PLC team, we are ready to take a look at that rubric that we've been looking at and talking about the C3 framework, how that fits into our social studies lessons, and so we've each taught them the segregation lesson. We plan now to take a look at kind of evaluating that lesson, how our students did, our teaching on it, to see where we need to move students forward in the next steps. So when I take a look at the framework rubric here, the very, very first part of it says the unit has tight alignment to the C3 framework and to the Common Core standards in our areas. So when we actually planned this unit, we really were mindful then of looking at the C3 framework and each of the dimensions. And so that piece of having then our um, compelling questions, our supporting questions, and then having the kids really look at those throughout the unit. We've done that part so far, so I feel like we have that dimension in there. The dimension two, with putting all the areas of social studies, we've got the civics in it. This lesson especially focuses on the economic piece of it. Um, we have some other lessons that focus on the geography piece. And then also the, the entire unit is really a history-based unit, so I think we have all that in there. Um, Dimension three is then really is a focus of this lesson too because we're going to have the kids analyze, we're going to analyze some sources that went with segregation and use the evidence and really talk about that with collaborative with their groups of what that was going to look like. Um, so we have that. And then I think dimension four, that communicating and conclusions, which we did through the kids sharing out of their images, really telling their thinking on that. And um, we can get more into that as we look at other parts of the rubric, but I, I really think that we have each part of the four dimensions on there. Um, as far as the Common Core Literacy Standards, what are you guys thinking about that? Um, well, I know the Compare and Contrast is a standard that we're really focusing on right now, and I think the students do that through slavery segregation, the different photos they could, we're comparing and contrasting, the different texts that we have given them. So I think that's a major focus that we've had so far. Yeah, I do too. The other one would be the close reading strategy that we've been working on and looking at all the different um, passages that we've read and looking at some of the images and really the idea of reading it closely and going back to the text mm -hmm. multiple times. Yeah, the evidence piece of it, of yeah. really trying to get the kids to say that it's not just, you know, I think this, right, but right. I know this I because this. and this is how I can prove that. Mm -hmm. I know. And I, I, one thing that I really think that my students have done well with this is really starting to look at that source too and, and keep referring back to that. So to the image of yeah, the source. Yeah. Which before this I don't think that they've done that really well. Yeah. But the, I think practice, 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 you know, helps with that too. Alright, so if we take a look then at the key shifts in the C3 framework and the Common Core, we've got quite a few shifts on there. Um, what are you guys thinking about that? I feel like we addressed the shifts when we did our planning of the unit. We looked at all the dimensions of the C3 framework, and we really embedded our literacy standards in the lessons as we were planning, so I think we did a really good job agree. addressing. Good questions. Right. Right. So I, yeah, I agree that the, the questioning piece of it's in there with our compelling or supporting. We've got the collaborative piece in there. You know, our literacy practices, we really, really focused on those through a lot of our PLC time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, the text complexities, um, just having our different sources with the read naturally ones, some of those read work things, plus all of the literature, books that we read aloud to the kids. I really feel like um, a lot of those are focused on. And, you know, just with our writing from sources, too, um, this the whole summative project that we have planned for them to actually create their own nonfiction text about right. slavery through segregation yeah. really fits on that. That's more of a summative, but we are checking that along the way too. And they put that academic vocabulary into their books as I, they write. Exactly. So really focus on those text features when they do that. That academic vocabulary goes from that too. So and I even think that academic vocabulary translates into other areas because I'll hear my kids talk about that during our class meetings or during our morning meetings or they're bringing that and kind of connecting to their own lives too. Right. All right. Exactly. So then if we look at like the instructional supports within the next um, area of the rubric is that, which I really feel like this whole unit is so amazing to them because they don't really realize that this happened in history, that there was such a thing as slavery, that there was such a thing as segregation, that and, and that it wasn't as long ago as they think it was. Exactly. And how long it actually lasted. Right. Right. I think that that interest and engagement keeps them hooked to the entire unit. 
Absolutely. And with all the literature, the wonderful books that there are there. And they, they mm -hmm. just don't even want you to stop yeah. reading. Right. And they just instantly, naturally internalize everything. Mm -hmm. I agree. And so when we look at those, I think all the instructional supports are there. I think this unit is such a good one, um, well, and especially this lesson that we're looking at, the photos, is such a good one for differentiation because our students that maybe aren't our highest readers can take part and be just as much of a participant as your higher readers as they're looking at the images, they um, focus into the pictures as struggling readers usually do, and there's little amount of text, they just have to look at the sourcing, so um, they have as much opportunity to be successful at it as your higher learners as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The other thing that I think stands out in this one is one of them is technology. And although we don't always let them go look for things online right. with this unit, because there is some things that you kind of have to be careful with, you know, third graders that we don't necessarily want them to see and know all about everything that right. happened the way with violence treated. How, mm -hmm. how immense that really was. I mean, if they understand that there were sit-ins and that there was violent things, mm -hmm. I don't think we need to necessarily mm -hmm. show them Correct. all the pieces that go with that. Right. But I do think that this lesson that we did leads to that technology piece that we're, you know, making mm -hmm. that digital timeline mm -hmm. next in Computer mm -hmm. Lab, that these images can then go on that timeline, mm -hmm. and it really makes that visual representation when right. they're creating that timeline make yeah. more we, sense, too. We've been really planful, too, with our technology person for her to help us with sites that are good and instructionally sound yeah. for our students and safe that we know that they can go there. And right. So I think that that instructional supports, we've looked mm -hmm. at not just, you know, even media specialists, we've looked at our, mm -hmm. you know, computer lab specialists, as you just mentioned, we've really planned together. So I think that we have done a nice job of really thinking through some of that stuff, too. So if we go to the very last piece of it, I think that that will get us into more of the part of talking about the lesson that we actually did in that, um, because it's assessment. Mm -hmm. And so in that we know we have a summative assessment with the end in mind of looking at the kids are creating this you know, nonfiction book, mm -hmm. we also look at formatively along the way and you know, use that rubric of thinking of where the kids are at as far as when they analyze an image, where they, where they right. fall on that. So taking a look then at our student work in here, um, what are some of the things that stood out to you guys about how do you think that they did in this lesson, you know, as far as analyzing the images and stuff like that for segregation? For mine, um, I realized we've talked about segregation, we talked about what prejudice meant, but we hadn't really gone into the different types of oppression, different types of segregation, so that's where when I, after I've done this, looking through this, that's our next step, is to talk about where were the African Americans oppressed and what types of segregation occurred. Because they know there's segregation and they know that's the separation of blacks and whites, but they are not exactly um, knowledgeable about what types of segregation there were. That was for my group. One of the place. things that I noticed in my group um, was they did a nice job of looking at the sourcing, which I didn't push too much because I wanted to see who would naturally go there and who didn't. And I would say probably, you know, 90% of my kids did a great job with um, being able to find, you know, where the image, what the dates of the images were. Mm -hmm. But then I still have quite the, um, you know, range of, of the ability levels to really analyze photos, whereas, one, you know, I have had one group, the exact same photo, you know, really the lunch lady is refusing to serve the black men, whereas the same picture in another group, oh, well, the black men were sitting down and eating at a counter. So I really still have that um, that range of understanding. Um, so some of those books that we yep. put into it mm -hmm. should help clarify yeah. some. Of yes, those yes, because we haven't mm -hmm. we haven't read books like *The Sit In* and all that right. yet. So my kids, I, from looking at their questions, I can really tell that they are starting to understand what segregation was. But their questions are showing me that they're ready to understand. So how did they overcome? the oppression and move in, they're ready to know about some of the civil rights stuff because they're asking was Martin Luther there and we haven't talked a lot about him, mm -hmm. but they have that background knowledge and they're ready to find out, so how did, how did you say and how did this end, yes. 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 yeah, and that's what I can tell from their questions, that they are ready for that next question. That's exactly what I noticed in mine too, the, one of the students asked me, he said, all right, we figured out how slavery ended with the 13th Amendment, mm -hmm. but now we've learned that there's all these different oppressions that happened after the Civil War. How did those stop? Right. What caused mm -hmm. this to end? Mm -hmm. And you know, who, who was the president mm -hmm. who did that? Mm -hmm. 
So the kids really, I think, are ready to move on to that piece of it too. Yeah. They're yeah. Right. really looking at. So now they understand just by you know answering that first supporting question and the second supporting mm -hmm. question of what was slavery and how that ended, mm -hmm. how is our country divided, and they kind of know now how that piece ended. But they really want to figure out now, you know, just introducing this to them with that vocabulary because I feel like that academic vocabulary of you know sharecropping and segregation, and voting rights, those are things that the, the kid, the prejudice, you're right, that our kids, you know, and even oppression, right. they didn't understand what those were before starting but this unit. Did, yeah. And now they want to know how did they get from there to where we are today, yes. right. and where we're all together. Who so I think, this, I think this is actually a good formative assessment for mm -hmm. segregation, yep. just because it gives us then a snippet of what they really do understand and where their misconceptions are right. at to lead us into what read alouds do we need to yep. do next? And I yep. think we have those sources already available yes. to us. We've got some of yep. those ready to roll. Yes. So I feel like our next steps is to do some more of the read alouds, yep. start moving into some of the other um, types of oppression, mm -hmm. and as you said, Nikki, other types of segregation that there were, and maybe even leading into what you said, Caitlin, of then how did people fit into this? Mm -hmm. Because I don't also, you know, they, like you said, they know Martin Luther King Jr., but I don't want them to think that Martin Luther King... He was the one that fixed it all. Yes, right, right. exactly. Yes. That's just what I was And there are so many no-names that are important. That's why yeah. these books would be great, because it's not people that they've always heard of. Exactly. So we have our Ruby Bridges, our Rosa mm -hmm. Parks, but there's also all these other people that weren't famous, but they're the ones that took a stand. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can get kids... You know, I think that, that Dimension 4 is sometimes hard to get to in the C3 framework, but if we do that, like you were talking about earlier, Shane, and I wonder through our class meetings mm -hmm. if we can even get kids to understand then or really take a look at, I can be this person. Right, mm -hmm. right. I can make That's what I was wondering, too. Mm -hmm. is like, And even like if you were living during this time, what would you do? You're not Martin Luther King Jr., but what would you do? Could you have been yeah, that brave? Could you have been that brave? Yep. Yeah. It's easy well, to say it, but or to even, actually do you it. You know, the prejudice that we even have within our classrooms now, just the economic base, we have the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. You know, having kids realize that everybody inside mm -hmm. can be a nice person, doesn't right. matter what they wear on the outside. Right. It's just right. some of those things I think yeah. that we can really bring out. And, you know, I think before you speak week, next mm -hmm. week, I think that this tie right can tie mm -hmm. right into right. that, too. I agree. All right, so anything else that you feel like next steps should be? Um, I think we have a good, pretty good grasp of where mm -hmm. we should need to go I next. So too. Yep. All right, so we'll start looking at some of those lessons then and planning those and you know getting ready to roll those out the next. Perfect. That sounds great. Okay.